From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to the CUBE Conversation here in Palo Alto at our studios of the CUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. We're here during the crisis of COVID-19 doing remote interviews. I come into the studio, we've got a quarantine crew are here getting the interviews, getting the stories out there. And of course, the story we continue to talk about is the impact of COVID-19 and how we're all getting back to work, uh, either working at home or working remotely and virtually certainly. But as things start to change, uh, we can start to see events, mostly digital events. And we're here to talk about an event that's coming up called the Failover Conference from Gremlin, which has now gone digital because it's April 21st. But I think what's important about this conversation that I want to get into is not only talk about the event that's coming up, but talk about the scale problems that are being highlighted by this change in work environment, working at home. We've been talking about the at scale problems that we're seeing, whether it's a flood of surge of traffic and the chaos that's ensuing across the world with this pandemic. So I'm excited to have two great guests, Alberto Fernando, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Gremlin and Tammy Butto, Principal Site Reliability Engineer for SRE. Uh, guys, thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Alberto, I want to get to you first. You know, we've known each other before. You've been in this industry. We all, we've been all been talking about the cloud native, uh, cloud scale for some time. It's kind of inside the ropes. It's inside baseball. Tammy, you're a site reliability engineer. Everyone knows Google and knows how well cloud works. This is large scale stuff. Now with the COVID-19, we're starting to see the average person, my brother, my sister, our family members, and people around the world go, oh my God, this is really a high impact. This change of behavior this surge of, you know, whether, whether it's traffic on the internet or work at home tools that are inadequate, you're starting to see <laughs> the, these statistical things that were planned for not working well. And this actually maps to things that we've been talking about in our industry. Alberto, you've been on this. Uh, what, how are you guys yeah. doing? And what's your what's your take on this situation we're in right now? Yeah, yeah, we're we're uh, we're doing pretty well as a company. Uh, we were born as a distributed organization uh, to begin with. So for us, working in a distributed environment from all over the world is is common practice day to day. Um, personally, you know, I'm originally from Italy. My parents, my family is Milan and Bergamo, out of all places. So I, I have to follow the news with extra care. And um, so much, um, it, make, it becomes so much clear nowadays that technology is not just a powerful tool to enable our businesses, but it also is so critical for our day-to-day -day life. And thanks to you know video calls, I can easily uh, talk to my family back there every day. Uh, so that's that's really important. So yes, uh, we've been talking for a long time, as you mentioned, about uh, complex systems at scale and reliability, um, often in the context of mission critical applications, but more and more these um, systems uh, need to be reliable also when it comes to back office systems that enable people to yeah. continue to work on a daily basis. Yeah, well, our, our hearts go out to your family and your friends in Italy and hope everyone stays safe there. I know that was a, a tough situation, continues to be a challenge. Tammy, I want to get your thoughts. How's life going for you? You're a site reliable engineer. What you deal with on the tech side is now happening in the real world. Yeah, it's, it's almost, it's mind blowing. And to me that we're seeing these, these things happen. It's, it's a paradigm that needs attention. What, how do you look at it as a SRE, dealing with mostly from a tech side, now seeing it play out in real life? Yeah, it's been such an interesting situation, obviously really terrible for everybody to have to go through and deal with. So one of the things that I specialize in as a site reliability engineer is incident management. And so for example, I previously worked at Dropbox where I was um, you know, the incident manager on call for 500 million customers, you know, it's like 24 seven shifts. Have these large scale incidents, you really need to be able to act fast. There are two very important metrics that we track and care about um, as a site reliability engineer. The first one is mean time to detection. How fast can you detect that something is happening? Obviously, if you detect an issue faster, then you've got a better chance of um, making the impact lower so you can contain the blast radius. So I like to explain it to people like, yeah. if you have a fire in your saucepan in your kitchen and you put it out, that's way better than waiting until your entire house is on fire. And the other metric is mean time to resolution. So how long does it take you to recover from the situation? Um, so yeah, this is a large scale global incident right now that we're in. Yeah, I know you guys do a lot, talk about chaos. 
theory and that applies, a lot of math involved, we all know that, but I think when you go look at the real world, this is gonna now going to be table stakes. And you know, there's now um, a, deep, a line in the sand here, you know, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. And I think uh, you guys have an interesting company, Gremlin, in the sense that this is, this is a complex system. And if you think about the world we're going to be living in, whether it's digital events, that you guys are have one coming up, or how the, the work at home, or tools that humans are going to be using, it's going to be working with systems, right? So you have this new paradigm going to be upon us pretty quickly. And it's not just buying software mechanisms or software, it's a complex system. It's distributed computing, it's an operating system. I mean, this is kind of the world. Can you guys talk about the Gremlin uh, situation of how you guys are attacking these new problems and these new opportunities that are emerging? Sure, I can talk about that. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I've always specialized in over the last 10 years is chaos engineering. And so the idea of chaos engineering is that you're injecting failure on purpose to uncover weaknesses. So that's really important in distributed systems with distributed you know, cloud computing, all these different services that you're kind of putting together. But the idea is if you can inject failure you can actually figure out what happens when I inject that small failure, and then you can actually go ahead and fix it. Um, one of the things I like to say to people is, you know, focus on what your top five critical systems are. Let's fix those first. Don't go for low hanging fruit, fix the biggest problems first, get rid of the biggest amount of pain that you have as a company. And then you can go ahead and like, actually, if you think about Pareto principle, the 80, 20 rule, if you fix 20% of your biggest problems, you'll actually solve 80% of your issues. That always works. Um, something that I've done while working at the National Australia Bank doing chaos engineering, also at Gremlin, at Dropbox, and I help a lot of our customers do that too. Alberto, talk about the mindset involved. It's almost counterintuitive. Whoa, whoa, risk, the biggest system. Yeah. I don't want to touch those. They're working fine right now. Yeah. And then these problems just gestate. They kind of hang around to the, the bin in the kitchen fire. You know, that's okay, I don't want to touch it. The, the house is still working. So this is kind of the, a, a new mindset. Could you talk about um, you, what your take is on that? Uh, is the industry there? I mean, oh, it was a kind of a corner case. You know, you had Netflix, you had the chaos monkey those days. And then now it's a DevOps practice uh, for a lot of folks, you guys are involved in that. What's the, what's the appetite and what's the progress of chaos engineering and mainstream yeah. these days? It's, it's interesting that you mentioned DevOps and, you know, recently Gartner came up with a new revisited DevOps framework that has chaos engineering in the middle of the lifecycle management of, of your application. And the reality is that systems have become so complex, um, you know, infrastructure, so many layers of abstractions. Uh, you have hundreds of services if you're doing microservices, but even if you're not doing microservices, you have so many applications connected to each other build really complex uh, workflows and automation flows, it's impossible for traditional QA to really understand where the vulnerability are in terms of resiliency, in terms of quality. Um, too often the production environment is also too different from the staging environment. And so you need a fundamentally different approach to go and find where your weaknesses are and find them before they happen, uh, before you end up have finding yourself in a situation like the one we're in today and you're not prepared. Uh, and so, so much of what we talk about is giving a tool uh, and, a me and a methodology for people to go and find these uh, vulnerabilities. Not so much about creating chaos, but it's about managing chaos that is built into our current system and exposing those vulnerabilities before they create problems. And so that's yeah. a very scientific methodology and, 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 and tooling that we uh, would bring to market and we help customers with. Tammy, I want to get your thoughts on something. You know, we used to riff a lot to our 10th Unicube. We've had a lot of conversations we've riffed over the, over the years, but you know, when the surge of Amazon Web Services came out, it was pretty obvious, the cloud's amazing. And look at the startups that were born. You mentioned Dropbox, you worked there. These companies, all these born in the cloud, these hyperscale companies built from scratch, great way to scale up. And we used to joke about Google and people say, I would like a cloud like Google, but no one has Google's use cases. And Google really pioneered the SRE concept and uh, you got to give them a lot of props for that. But now we're kind of getting to a world where it's becoming Google-like. There's more scale now than ever before. It's not a corner case, it's becoming more popular and more of a preferred architecture, this uh, large scale. What's your um, assessment of the, of the mainstream enterprises? How far are they in your mind are, we, are they there with chaos, are they closed? Are they doing it? How does someone take 
how does someone develop an SRE practice to get the, the Google-like scale? Because Google has an amazing network. They got large scale cloud, they have SREs. They've been doing it for years. How does a company that's transforming their IT have SREs? It's a great question. I get asked this a lot as well. Um, one of our goals at Gremlin is to help make the internet more reliable for everybody, everyone using the internet, all of the engineers who are trying to build reliable services. And so I'm often asked by you know companies all over the world, how do we create an SRE practice and how do we practice chaos engineering? You can get started actually rolling out your SRE program um, based on my experiences that I've done it. So when I worked at Dropbox, I worked with a lot of people who had been at Google, they'd been at YouTube, they were there when SRE was rolled out across those companies and then they brought those learnings to Dropbox and I learned from them. Um, but also the interesting thing is if you look at enterprise companies, so large banks, say for example, I worked at the National Australia Bank for six years, we actually did a lot of work that I would consider chaos engineering um, and SRE practices. So for example, we would do large scale disaster recovery. And that's where you fail over an entire data center to a secret data center in a, in a non-known location. And the reason is because you're checking to make sure that everything operates okay if there's a nuclear blast. That's actually what you have to do. And you have to do that practice every quarter. So, but, but if you think about it, it's not very good to only do it once a quarter. You really want to be practicing chaos engineering and, and injecting failure on purpose. I think actually, my, I prefer to do it three times a week. So I do it a lot, but um, I'm also someone who likes to work out a lot and be fit all the time. So I know that if you do something regularly, you get great results. So that's what I always tell everyone. Yeah, get the reps in, as we say, you know, get get stronger, get the muscle memory. Um, yeah, exactly. Guys, talk about the event that's coming up. You got an event that was scheduled, a physical event, and then you were right in the planning mode and then the crisis hits. Um, you're going digital, going virtual, it's really digital, but it's digital. Uh, it's on the internet. So how are you guys thinking about this? I know I, uh, it's out there, it's April 21st. Um, yeah. Can you share some specifics yeah. around the event? Well, who should be attending and, and how do they get involved online? Yeah, yeah, the event really came about, about uh, together about a month ago when uh, we started to see all the cancellations happening across the industry because of COVID-19. And we are extremely engaged with uh, in the community and we have a lot of talks and we were seeing a lot of conferences just dropping and so speakers losing their opportunity to reshare their knowledge uh, with respect to how you do reliability and, and topics that we focus on. And so uh, we quickly pivoted as a company and created a new uh, online event uh, to give everyone in the community the opportunity to, um, you know, just fail over to a new event as the as the company as, as the as the conference name says uh and um, and have those uh speakers who have lost their speaking slots uh have a new opportunity to go share their knowledge and so that came together really quickly we shared the idea with a dozen of our partners and everyone liked it and all of a sudden this thing took off uh like crazy in just a month we are approaching you know, 4,000 uh, registrations. We have over 30 partners signed up and supporting the initiative. A lot of uh, a lot of press partners as well covering the event. So it was impressive to see the amount of interest that um, that we were able to generate in such a short amount of time. Uh, and uh, really, this is a conference for anybody who is interested in resiliency, right? And and uh, if you want to know uh, from the best on how to build business continuity across systems, people and processes, this is a great opportunity um, at no cost really, it's a free conference. And the target persona and the audience you want to have attend is what, SREs or folks doing uh, architectural work? What's the, what's the target yeah. person to attend? Architects, SREs, developers, um, business leaders who care about uh, the quality and reliability of their applications, uh, who need to help create a framework and a mindset for their organization that speaks to what Tammy was saying a minute ago, having that constant practice yeah. on a daily basis about going finding how to improve things. You know, Tammy, we've been doing, uh, going to physical events with theCUBE and extracting the signal from the noise and distributing it digitally for 10 years. And I got to ask you, because now that those, are, those events have gone away, mm -hmm. you talk about chaos and injecting failure. Um, these doing these digital events is not as easy as just live streaming. It's, it, it's hard to replicate the value of a physical event, years of experience and standards, roles and responsibilities to digital, different consumption environment, say synchronous, you're trying to create a synchronous environment. 
it's its own complex system. So I think a lot of people are experimenting and learning <laughs> from these events because it's pretty chaotic. So I'd love to get your thoughts on how you look at these digital events as a chaos engineer. Um, yeah. How should people be looking at these events? How are you guys looking at it? You know, I mean, also you want to get the program going, get people out there, get the content, but you know, to iterate on this, how do you view this? It is really different. So I actually like to um, compare it to fire drills in SRE. So often what you do there is you actually create a fake incident or a fake issue. Um, so you're just, um, you know, you're saying, let's have a fire drill. Similar to like, you know, when you're in a building and you have a fire drill that goes off and you have wardens and everything and you all have to go outside. So we can do that in this new world that we're all in all of a sudden. You know, a lot of people have never run an online event and now all of a sudden they have to. So what I would say is like, do a fire drill, um, run a, a, you know, a fake one before you do the actual one to make sure that everything does work okay. My other tip is make sure that you have backup plans, backup plans on backup plans on backup plans. Like as in SRE, I always have at least three to five backup plans. Like I'm not just saying plan A and plan B, but there's also a C, D and E. Um, and I think that's very important. And, you know, even when you're considering technology, one of the things we say with chaos engineering is, you know, if you're using one service, inject failure and make sure that you can fail over to a different alternative service in case something goes wrong. Yeah, hence the failover conference, which is the name of the conference. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, we certainly are going to be sending a digital reporter there uh, virtually. Um, if you need any backup plans, obviously we have the remote interviews here. Uh, if you need any help, let us know. Really appreciate it. I'll, great to see you guys. And thanks for sharing. Uh, any final thoughts on the conference? How, what, what happens when we get through the other side of this? I'll give you guys a final word. We'll start with Alberto with you first. Yeah, I think when, uh, when we are on the other side of this, we'll, we'll understand even more the importance of uh, effective uh, resilience, architecting and, and, uh, um, and uh, testing. Uh, I think, you know, as a as a uh, provider of tools and methodologies for that, uh, we uh, we think we will be able to help customers doing do a significant uh, leap forward on 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 that side. Uh, and the conference is just super exciting. Uh, I think it's going to be a great event. I encourage everyone uh, to participate. Um, we have a tremendous lineup of speakers uh, that have incredible reputation in their fields. So. I'm really uh, happy and, and um, excited about uh, the, um, the work that the team has been able to do with our partners to put together this type of event. Okay, Tammy? Yeah, for me, um, I'm actually going to be doing the opening keynote for the conference. And the topic that I'm speaking about is that reliability matters more now than ever. Um, and I'll be sharing some you know, bizarre, weird incidents that I've worked on myself that I've experienced, you know, really critical, strange issues that have come up. But yeah, I just, I'm really looking forward to sharing that with everybody else. So please come along, it's free. Um, you can join from your own home and we can all be there together to support each other. You got a great community support. I know there's a lot of partners, uh, press, media and, and ecosystem and customers. So congratulations, Gremlin having a conference on April 21st called the Failover Conference. Uh, the Cube and SiliconANGLE will have a digital reporter there. We'll be covering the news. Thanks for coming on and sharing and appreciate the time. I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto Studios with a remote interview with Gremlin around their failover conference, April 21st. It's really demonstrating, in my opinion, the at scale problems that we've been working on in the industry now more applicable than ever before as we get post pandemic with COVID-19. Thanks for watching, be back. Mm -hmm.